Like always, doing some gathering can help you clear this quest successfully. Here's another edited map I made. This is the same map that we fought Plum Daimyo Hermitar in. My recommended gathering is the same as with the Plum Daimyo Hermitar. Mega potions and pickaxes in area 8, with more mega potions in area 9. A max potion in area 5. Psycho serum and potions in area 2. More potions and a demon drug in area 3. And shock traps in area 6. You can, of course, feel free to gather for anything else you may find helpful, like the map, whetstones, and paintballs in Area 1. There should be a link in the description to this image, as well as a couple of guides not made by me that go into more depth, if that's helpful. For this fight especially, you want to take out the small monsters in the area. They can be very disruptive, at best interrupting your already small openings, at worst getting you hit or killed. If you need some more information about Copper Blanganga, I recommend checking out my video on him. It's in the cards right now. But the gist is, having Ice Elemental is pretty important, as you can't break his fangs without it. Breaking his fangs is important, because it will cause his roar to not have any effect. Besides that, you just want to attack as much as possible, dealing ice damage to his fangs and building up poison. This armor we're wearing has the faint negated armor skill, which is fantastic, as it will give us an opening when he does his stinky breath move. Now that the small monsters are dealt with, we can totally focus on Copper Blangonga. Using the provided shock trap is nice, as it will let us get some much needed damage to his fangs. However, if he burrows after you place it down, I want to say he's programmed to destroy the trap, but maybe I'm just unlucky. Since he doesn't charge as much as normal Blangonga, it can be difficult to get him to run into it. You can try placing it under him instead. But that can be dangerous and isn't guaranteed to work either. It's up to you if or how you use it. He's got a few rock throwing variations, they can be pretty difficult to deal with. What I normally do is just try to be close to him as much as possible, to avoid the rock move almost entirely. As you can see, when he roars as he becomes enraged, it's almost a guaranteed free hit from him. That's why it's important to break his fangs ASAP. I got lucky. Because of the faint negate armor skill, when he does his breath attack it's a great opening for a demon dance. Don't underestimate how effective attacking just once or twice each time is. Just because you deal low damage and have long combos doesn't mean you have to do them every time. It's also worth noting which sword attacks with what move, since your right sword will be ice and the left one will be poison.
hit and run. It's super useful. Don't neglect it. Now that the power juice has run out, I'll be using demon mode more sparingly. Now that I've dropped into yellow, I really want to sharpen back up. I'll leave the area. in peace trap. Now that his fangs are broken, his roar does nothing. I should have rolled earlier there and just took the quake. Remember to avoid being hit, even if it means being staggered for a second. Skill issue. Kill this you. Since we have sharpening skill increased, you don't need to leave the area to sharpen if you don't want to. Trust that your weapons are doing enough damage. Focus more on sneaking in attacks and getting out unscathed. Good luck. You've got this. <laughs> 